This is me, the Undead Viking, and this right here, this is Palm Island. Yes, this, these cards I have in my hand are an entire game, and it's called Palm Island. Uh, the idea behind the game is that you are in charge of a village on, like, an island in the middle of the South Pacific, and it is your job to just kind of improve that island. You need to uh, get access to uh, better resources, uh, get access to more resources. You need to uh, create um, impressive temples uh, on your in your village. And the idea is, after a set number of turns, eight turns... Uh, you will see how well you did. You'll total up your points, and and you'll see like, uh, you know, like in comparison to like a, a scoring chart, how well you do. Now that's like the solo game. Um, you can play the game uh, cooperatively and competitively against other players. Um, you know, and it's a lot of fun, no matter which way I played it. Now, one of the cool things about the game is the fact that it is just this deck of cards. Um, you could literally play this almost anywhere um since you actually just hold the cards in your hand you don't have to you can definitely just put them you know on a table and play it like so uh but uh, because you can just play the play with your with your uh, the hand of cards or the, the deck of cards in your hand um you can uh you know just play it like you can throw it in your pocket and bring it with you uh, when you go to work and play it on your break you could throw it in your backpack and play it at school um, <laughs> you could uh, on the commute uh, into work you, you can have it out and play and because of the fact that you if you you know each person gets their own deck um, you you could carry you know obviously like two three or four of these decks and you can hand them out and you could all just play the game at the same time um, you know the game can la game will last you around 10 15 minutes after you learn how to play the game and learned all the aspects of it it, it, it plays relatively quickly um so that's really cool now that isn't like you know a lot of times people will say oh yeah you know, that's the gimmick you know of the game right um but the bottom line is, is yeah okay it's kind of it's kind of got a cool thing going on as far as you know the portability of the game but that doesn't really matter. The game's just really, really cool and really, really fun. It's it's kind of a puzzle because of the fact that you kind of randomly you, you randomly set up the deck each time you play, and so because of that random order, each time you play it, it's going to be different, and you're going to have to like you know kind of work against that order of the cards to try to figure out the timing of 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 the upgrading of the process of each of the cards, which I'll explain when I show you how to play the game. Um, you, you have to figure out that timing and figure out, you know, how you're going to process that and how you're going to go ahead and, and, you know, attempt to score as many possible victory points as you can. So um, let me show you how to play Palm Island. Shouldn't take too long. Uh, and then we'll come back here and I'll give you uh, my final thoughts. All right, so this is Palm Island. What you're looking at in front of you right here are the 17 cards you'll be using in your hand every single time you play the game. Now, I'm going to show you how to play the game in like a solo uh, version, uh, but you can play this game uh, two players. You can play three players, four players. Uh, you can play it cooperatively. You can play it competitively. Uh, you know, there's a lot of different ways you can play, um, but the mechanisms of how the game is played is going to be exactly the same, um, you know, no matter uh, what type of game that you're playing. All right, so um, what you'll do is you'll take 16 of the 17 cards. This is the 17th card. You'll take 16 of the 17 cards and you'll shuffle those up. And let me just show you one thing really quickly. This little uh, symbol up here, this little uh, triangle up here, you have to make sure that that's in the top left section of the deck. Every single one of these cards, that little triangle there, has to be in the top left section of the card. Um, as you play this game, you're going to be turning their cards upside down, you're going to put them on their side, you're going to be flipping the cards over. Um, so you have to make sure that uh, you, they start off in this fashion so that like you can actually like you know improve the cards and level up the cards so to speak and actually play the game now this card is the turn card so like uh the game lasts eight turns and so you have a one two and you have a three four so what this card is used for it's put in the back of the deck and as you go through the deck the first time you hit it you will flip this card to the two the next time you'll have it at the three and the next time you have it at a four and then you'll start it all over with the one and do the same thing again until you've had eight turns and the game is over. So after you've done, you, you shuffle up these cards, 
uh, you go ahead and put them like so. Now, something about this game that um, is kind of neat, you are allowed to look at the order of the cards. Um, you know, it isn't like it's a surprise or whatever. So you can actually have some forethought and, and planning. Uh, but, you know, it... it Sometimes, even though you are able to look at the, 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 the which cards are there, it really won't matter. And I'll explain why here in just a little bit. But anyway, so uh, to play the game, you'll place the deck, you know, just put the, the cards in one of your hands like so. And what you'll do is you'll take the top card and you'll put it in the other hand. So you have the deck in this hand and the other card in this hand. Now, you'll make a decision each time uh, that you play. Well, it, and what it is going to be is you're going to pick which one of these two cards uh, you're going to take an action with. Now, in the rare situation that you can't take any action with either of the cards, you'll take this card and just put it in the back like so, and then you'll take this card and you'll put it in your hand. So, you know, but in this case, so we have these two cards. Now, there are three things that you can do on your turn. Um, you can, you, and you pick one of the cards to do one of these three things. You will turn a, you'll take a card and you'll decide you're going to use it as a resource, in which case you'll turn it like this and you'll put it in the back of the deck like so. And this doesn't work for this one, but if you'll notice, like this logger card, if you take that and you put it in the back like so, you can see now I have a log resource like that. Now to do that, you have to see if it costs anything to do so. So like you can see here, it says it's free. So you can take that action as a free action. Um, another action that you can take is, and you'll notice both of these are on the quarry, um, you can go ahead and you for two logs, you're able to take this card and turn it upside down. Now just, I'm, and, and to kind of illustrate this, let's just go ahead and check that out. So when you have this card, and you're allowed to turn it upside down, if you had two logs, you'd pay that cost, in which case, if you had two logs, not only gonna have the one here, if you had two logs, you would then revert them back to normal. You know, you, you wouldn't get to keep the logs, you do use up the resources. Um, but if you took that, then you'd take this card, as I drop it on the ground, you take that card, and, um, and of course I just messed it up here, there we go. So you will take that card and you will turn it upside down like so, but you won't keep it, you'll put it on the back. So basically you've, you've improved the card, but you're not gonna be able to use it until the next time you go through the deck, because remember, the turn card is going to be in front of that. All right, so notice that now when you upgrade the card and we get it, we'll be able to turn the card like so, and we'll put it down there as a resource, but then it's gonna provide uh, a stone for us, because it's the quarry. So, you know, that would be one of the actions you can take. Let's put it back to normal like so. Another action you can take, and you notice for two fish, you're allowed to just take this card and actually just flip it, like so. Now you don't turn it, you don't do anything to it, you just take the card and you flip it like so. And when you do that, then notice now you have the action. Once again, it's worth a stone. But if you're able to get, um, you know, two uh, and, and one, like so, then you'd be able to actually turn it upside down again. And notice how then it's, it's a quarry that you'd activate for free. It would be worth two victory points, but also it would be allowed to be used for free to create two stones. So you can kind of see how these cards will upgrade over time. Uh, most cards will have basically four different possible facings of usage that each card is going to have. So in this case, like obviously what we're probably going to end up doing is we're going to keep the quarry in our hand, and we're going to take this, and we're going to go ahead and put that log like so. So now we're going to have this card and that card. And so... Now, the temple, so this is one of those situations where I'm probably not gonna be able to do anything because the temple, as you can see here, like I, in order to use it, I need I need a fish, uh, I need two stone, and I need um, you know a, a log to be able to go ahead and turn it over so I'd be able to you know take this temple and actually flip it like so. So I would be able to like, you know, like have a three victory point temple in that case, but I can't do that. So now I have to think, as I'm already screwing, so, Chances are I'm probably not going to be able to get to the temple, but it's a good chance I'll be able to get to the quarry. So I'm going to go ahead and take, take the temple, and I'm going to put it back. And lo and behold, what's going to happen here, I got my another logger. Now remember, of course, you were able to go ahead and plan ahead and look and see what your cards are. You would take this, and you put it like so, and you do kind of jut them out like that so you can be able to see them. And now what I could do is, even though I'm looking at housing over here, 
where I could, you know, improve housing if I had a fish and a, a log. What I could do here is now what I can do is I can pay these two logs. So I can go ahead and pay those two logs like so. And then I can take this card, I can flip it, and now I'm going to put the quarry back there. Now this continues on. Now, so, okay, now I have housing and I have boats. Well, of course, housing and boats aren't going to work, you know, because I, you know, I, but I, you know, I can't improve my housing, but I can take boats. Now I can create a fish and I can put that back there. Now I have to choose between a blacksmith and housing and so on and so forth. I'm not going to go through my entire deck here, but eventually what's going to happen, and I'm just going to kind of cheat here. And, you know, I'm going to look, show you some of the other cards too. Like you have blacksmith, um, like boats, and, and you can improve your resources, obviously. It, it, you know, it's very common at the beginning of the game, you will be turning your resources like so, but you'll also want to be able to like save up so you can actually, you know, improve them, you know, so you can like get to like boats that'll give you, you know, a, a log and two fish, you know, eventually things like that. Um, and later on, you'll have things like, you know, these, these large market, the large market is a really awesome thing. Notice how like you can use it to, um, if you turn it like this, you know, um, it costs you two fish or two uh two two logs or two wood to be able to do that but then you know you might be in a situation where you really need one of each right because a lot of these improvements cost uh you know like one of each but you only have two logs but with the large market if you turn it over now you have a log and a fish you, so you can kind of get the the semblance of it so you have a lot of these different cards and a lot of these things and like some of them like the temple you know, um, they're going to be worth tons of victory points if you're able to finally turn them over to the level 3, and it's worth 10 victory points at the end. But eventually what's going to happen is you get to this card, you're going to turn it like that, and you're going to set it up, and now you're going to start, and, and all, the, all the cards that you improved and made better are going to be, you know, different the next time through. And you'll keep doing that, and keep doing that, and, and trying to, you know, improve, you know, your island, you know, but basically you're improving your deck until you finally get to the end. And then you're going to total up the number of points you have by, like, you know, which side each one of your cards is at and how many victory points each one's with. So, I mean, even, like, the logger, if you're able to improve the logger all the way to the end, it's going to be worth five victory points. You know, so, you know, and, and you know, and you might not want to do that because if you look here, like, this one actually allows you to, like, create two wood, but, you know, and you, you could still increase it, you know, with two wood and, uh, two stone you can get it to this side but then you'll notice it's how it doesn't create anything for you so you might not ever do that but it would still be worth two victory points in this situation so that's kind of like some of the cool decisions that you'll make as you play the game and then after you're all done you can go ahead and you can see like you know there's a little chart here in the rules that says you know tan needs work you know, and so on and so forth, depending upon how well you do as far as the victory points. And that's just the solo game. I mean, I can't tell you how many times I played this just goofing around, uh, playing it, you know, in, in my spare time. Um, and that, that's pretty cool. But there's a couple things that you can do that um, if you're playing competitively, what you'll do is you will, both you and the other person that's playing, you will go through the deck um, simultaneously in real time. And then out of each round, players will stop and like you know take actions and by taking actions i mean you're going to have these bonus cards they're going to be worth bonus victory points and you know it's like one one of them here is worth four and if you're if you still have resources that you can spend over here you'll be able to put these cards into your hand and you'll be have you'll have bonus victory points that you'll you'll you know you'll have earned and you know and the, you, you might be saying well it's simultaneous well if you're the person who gets done first then you're the one who gets to pick which one of these cards you wish to purchase first. And so, you know, you'll be, it's one thing to be going through your deck and kind of like looking ahead, seeing which cards are coming up, trying to make good decisions and, and, and plotting it out. But if the other person's kind of right getting through their, their, their hand quickly, you, know, you might want to actually, you know, like make your decisions a lot faster, obviously, if you want to make sure you get the, be you know, the better victory points which is kind of fun you know and the, the frantic pace or the the added like timed a, a aspect of it uh makes competitive play pretty fun now what i actually had more fun playing however and this is the way i played with my daughter a lot um was we played the cooperative version and when you play cooperatively uh you will pick a disaster or several disasters if you want where um, you know, and you'll see here that it actually suggests that, you know, like, you know, if you're, if you have two players play famine, three players hurricane, four players eruption, but you know, there's nothing saying you couldn't play, 
you know, like, you know, for a higher level or whatever. Or you could have more than one disaster. But what you're doing is that each player is going to be trying to, all the players are going to be trying to get the resources necessary to prevent, um, you know, like, these, these calamities from occurring. And you'll notice that, like, so, like, if eruption, you need three wood, uh, four fish, and four stone, and that allows you to flip this upside down. And then for four, six, and five, it allows you to flip it over. And then for five, eight, and six, it allows you to turn it upside down. And then you prevented the eruption of, of the island. And my daughter and I had a lot of fun playing with the disasters and working together and trying to make good decisions. You know, and you know, and I and I played it that way with her because it you know, just worked better, you know, because then she didn't feel like she had to, like, race against Dad to try to, try to, uh, you know, do better with her deck. She was able to kind of relax, and we were both able to give each other hints and ideas and suggestions on how to play. Now, I mean, the game's just fun. I mean, it's just, it, I, I, I enjoyed the puzzle of, of shuffling the deck each and every time that I played, and then starting up, and then, like, trying to figure out how I was going to use, um, you know, the, the cards, and how I was going to uh, put those together in a way that it was going to allow me to win. Uh, and, you know, it I do really like the fact that, like, um, as far as a puzzle game goes, uh, it it made me feel smart, right? Uh, there's lots of games out there that, that present me with a puzzle each time I play, and I just get, you know, confounded. And this was still difficult, and it was still tough to try to figure out the best possible way to squeeze out the most possible points. But, you know, when I... And this is actually feels like a really good accomplishment when you get those... To when you get 40 or more points, because it really feels like you, you squeezed all the juice uh, out of the lemon, so to speak, right? And, um, and when I was able to do that, it really gave me a sense of accomplishment. And, and, and it didn't feel like it was too easy, and it certainly didn't feel like it was impossible to do other, either. So um, just, just a ton of fun. But let me talk more about that uh, in my final thoughts. Oh, 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 yeah, man. All right, cool. So there you go. That's Palm Island. Now, just bottom line is yeah okay so it is a, car, a game that you can carry anywhere and that's really really cool there's been some other games like that too and i'm trying to remember i mean technically i think flip city is one of those games maybe you've heard of that it's from a company a little little tiny board game company you might want to check that one out um but uh there's other games like um god i can't remember there was a game that was like steampunky that was like you you held it in one hand it, it came out like two or three years ago I don't remember it, but there's been other games like this that have that, um, I don't want to say gimmick, but they have that, uh, 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 theme or they have that, um, uh, a tribute, I guess would be the way I'd put it. Um, but you know, and it's cool. It's cool. The fact that you can take it anywhere you want, but I don't care about that. The game's just fun and it's just, it's a puzzle game and I like puzzle games. I like games where I have to figure out when I'm going to use a different card, uh, at a certain way in a certain time. And the fact that each card can be kind of used in different ways and, and like the timing of when you use it, I really, really enjoy that. And, um, it, it doesn't hurt that I, I felt pretty good about how well I played the game as well. Um, as, as, you know, as far as like the number of games that I play, uh, which are lots, <laughs> um, since this is like my life, uh, you know, I'm, I'm always stunned at how bad <laughs> I, I am at games. So when I find a game that I'm good at, it's kind of a nice little surprise. And I'm, I, I guess like I was just, I've been really successful uh, with this one, and I've been having a lot of fun with it. Um, plus, I, I dig the theme, and the art's awesome, you know, and it, so it's just, the, I like the idea of, of being this person that's in charge of this little tiny settlement, and, and like, slowly but surely building it up, and, and, and then after you get done, after a set period of time, just seeing how well you do, and um, I, as far as, like, playing it solo, which I did a lot, I actually surprised myself with how often I was playing the game and just goofing around with it, because and, and for me, that was just one of those things where it's like, I wasn't doing it to like research it or anything like that. I mean, I, I, I kind of grokked the game pretty quickly, but for me, it was like, I got, I can do better. I, I, I can, I can, I can do that better. I, I, I would learn something each time I played it. You know, it's like I get done and, oh, I scored 24 points. That's not so good. You know, it's like, God, I, you know, I probably, I probably should have upgraded, you know, my, my, my large market way sooner. 
than I did. Okay, let's let's this next game. Let's try that. You know, and I and I try that. You know, I would I would go through that process, and I would I would kind of you know have that mentality of that's what I'm going to do this particular game, and then I would do that. And I would say, oh, that didn't work really well. Well, let's let's try again, and maybe like not really worry about upgrading my temple this time. And I go through and I try that. You know, and so I I, I was really really surprised with you know just the 17 cards just how much depth and how much like revisiting of the game I was doing you know and and that really like uh and and I shouldn't I mean I hate to say surprise because that means like I, I went into it with like oh well here we go you know but it was just the the amount of depth and everything like that was a very pleasant um bit of like added fun that I wasn't expecting and, and, you know, because I knew the game was going to be fun. I read the rules before I got the game. I was like, this is going to be cool. I'm going to be enjoying playing this one with my family. And we did. We had enjoyed it a lot. But then the fact that I found myself, you know, like, ah, oh, this is what am I doing here? And just sitting there and playing the game by myself. And, and you know, like, oh, I can do better. I can do better. You know, that was an added bonus in my mind. So there you go. If you like solo games, I think you're really going to like this one. I think you're going to love the fact that you can just kind of take this with you. If, if you're eating lunch at work and you got a sandwich in one hand, um, you can have these cards out on the table and you can be going through it and playing it, you know, and, and you know, just having fun with it. Um, if you're somebody who, you know, likes to play a cooperative game but, you know, doesn't have, um, like, you know, a ton of space to play, this is also a really, really fun game. I can imagine, like, couples going on, on like, you know, traveling, you know, playing it on the plane or something like that and having having a good time playing the game against each other. So, um, for that matter, you know, it's just like, it's just, like I said, it's just flat out fun. So, if you have any questions about Palm Island, please ask away. I'll be happy to answer those as best as I can. Um, thank you as always for taking the time to watch this video. And until next time, I'm the Undead Viking, and I'm telling you to have yourself one heck of an awesome day. All right, bye-bye.